Let's uh, move on to our next presenter. Uh, we have a verified evaluation of secret polynomials and dynamic proofs of retrievability. And uh, the talk is being given by Jean-Guillaume Dumas. Take it away. Okay, thank you. So it's working? Okay, great. Um, so the presenter uh, two, two talk ago was talking about um, polynomial evaluation where the point is secret and the polynomial is known in private set intersection. So we're all dealing in with the converse operation where the polynomial is secret and encrypted and the evaluation is public. Okay, and we do that for uh, proof of retrievability. So I'm just being talking about this, uh, this application that we have. Uh, we want to store some data remotely and we want to be sure that the data is still there. But of course we don't want to download again the whole set of uh, information. So uh, we want to be able to read, to update, and most importantly to audit what's there. Okay. And so there are other solutions, but uh, uh, in our solutions we want to, uh, to duplicate as little as possible the data so that it remains cheap. Okay. And fast, of course. So more precisely, we have some client with limited resources, uh, some server that we don't trust. We live in the malicious setting. And we have some data uh, that the server wants to, uh, to outsource, okay? And we want to, uh, and we will be um, storing the data else elsewhere and want to be sure that it's still there. So, okay, so of course the first uh, way to work with uh, Amazon Web Service or Microsoft Azure or Google, whatever, is by reputation of the server. The server won't uh, bother to modify our data or because it has some reputation to defend. This does not work in decentralized storage networks or if the, uh, the server is a newcomer with no reputation whatsoever, for instance. Okay, so uh, nice ideas in the setting were uh, to use redundancy, shuffling, and encryption. Okay, so you, you duplicate your data. And uh, if there is a small error, then you error correct it, correct it. Okay, and if it's a large error by random sampling, you probably will be able to catch up some modifications. Okay, so the drawback of this is that in practice, it, it, you need five or ten times the amount of storage needed just to store the data in the first place. So that's very expensive. Um, so we used another solution for this, uh, where the data is as small as possible, meaning we don't have any redundancy at all. Okay, and so the way we do this is to do some computations with the data. So what do we do? We treat the data as a matrix, okay? And we do matrix vector products and dot products on this data to check that the result is correct and therefore that the data is not modified, okay? Um, so more precisely, we have on the client side a secret vector. Uh, we compute a matrix vector product with this vector. We send the data to the server. And when we want to check that the data is still there and unmodified, we just send another random vector for the other side of the matrix vector product, okay? The server recomputes a matrix vector product on the other side and we check, in fact, the, the dot products of all the results, okay? So if the data is unmodified, most probably the output is the same. If the data is modified, then most probably the dot products will be different, okay? And so we have some other stuff to deal with uh, dynamicity. We want to be able also that the data is modified, so we need to modify the control vectors and things like this, okay? So we know how to do this uh, quite efficiently. Uh, so this is pretty nice. This is almost optimal in terms of uh, extra storage. You just have the data in itself and you consider it as a matrix, but that's it, okay? The catch is that the secret vectors, that is the keys for the client and the communications are now square root of n, square root of the size of the database. So we want now to reduce this. Okay, and that's the goal of this paper. Um, so still, like this, this is pretty efficient. So here is some experiments, um, transatlantic experiments. So in, a, in purple, you have a violet, you have a, a SHAT 256 sum on the data, which goes up to a, a terabyte. Okay, and our, uh, so matrix vector multiplication is, is uh, green. So it's time, so it's, it's quite fast already. And this, the client time is pretty nice, it's fast. The catch is the proof size and the client keys which are square root of n, so this comes 
quite, quite a large number now for a terabyte of data. This is a megabyte of keys and, and size of communications. So we want to reduce those numbers most um, in this paper. So we have many things that are of size square root of n because this is, uh, this is the optimum. Uh, in our dot products, all the elements are square root of n and the computation is square root of n. So how can, how can we reduce this? So of course, the, the first idea is to take a rectangular database instead of square. Okay, so we can reduce some of the elements, but the other ones grow much bigger. Um, but that's okay. Uh, the other idea is to change the dot products into polynomial evaluation. So instead of random vectors, we take random geometric projections. Okay, and that becomes a polynomial evaluation. Okay, that takes care of most of the uh, problems. We, there, there remains this V here. Uh, which is still large, and so the idea is to outsource that also to the server. But then we need to encrypt it so that the server cannot cheat. Okay? So now the problem is how to uh, evaluate a secret polynomial okay, to check to make the audit. And that's the problem we deal with. Right? So we need two things. So first of all, to efficiently evaluate it as an encrypted thing. So we need homomorphic encryption, linearly homomorphic encryption for this. And second thing, we want to check that the value is correct. Okay, so we need a certificate to prove that the evaluation is actually the one we need so that we can check that the data is still, is still there and modified. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So just a hint uh, of what we need. So we need, of course, security. So we need the certificate to bind the value to the correct evaluation. And we need privacy so that the coefficient of the polynomial, the V, is not revealed so that afterwards the audit is still correct, okay? We want dynamicity, so we need to be able to change one coefficient of a polynomial and not reduce the setup. And we need efficiency, of course, so that everything is, is practical. So privacy, we do that by hiding the coefficient of the polynomial. I won't go into the details, but we add some random values that are fast to, uh, to unmask, okay? So that the coefficients remain secret. And to check that it's correct, we check the evaluation with a previous evaluation point. Okay, so you have a new evaluation point, we check it with a previous one, which is secret. Okay, and for this, we just use uh, classical uh, polynomial uh, formula for this. And we do this check, in fact, in the exponents, because the things are, uh, must remain private. Okay, and so for this, we will need pairings so that we can do multiplication in the exponents. Okay, and so the job now is how to be able to do that fast uh, with the server. So I won't go into many, many details about it, but basically the idea is with, we store the coefficient of the polynomial, we send a random point in clear, the polynomial does the evaluation homomorphically, it computes also the certificate, and we can back and check the certificate and the evaluation. The difficulty here is how uh, the server will be able to do that very fast. Okay, so we have, we use the, the algebra for this so that we can, it remains linear. It's also um, possible to make it parallel. Uh, and with all this, we have something which is relatively uh, fast. So for instance, uh, here is a sequential performance. We compare, so our evaluation to pure evaluation when nothing is uh, ciphered, nothing is verified, nothing is encrypted with uh, Lipsnark, where we verify the circuit, but it's not encrypted. And our solution where it's encrypted, it's verified and it's dynamic. So of course it's slower on the server. But on the client size, this is pretty fast. This is faster than Snarks and the proof size is pretty small actually. Okay, and this is scalable because uh, if you have more uh, more um, CPUs on the server side, then you can have some pretty nice speed up. So if for instance here for a degree four million, uh, the speed up is almost, if you have four processors, it's four times faster, eight times faster, quite times, 16 times, 20 times faster. So we can pretty much use a server with a lot of resources and a small client and this works nicely. And of course, the end is to put that together, the verification of polynomials, okay, and the verification of the database, okay. So the overall protocol is like this. So we have just small secrets, not vectors anymore. 
so O of one size. Um, the dot product now becomes a evaluation. We have this, uh, this uh, secret evaluation at one point that we use to check the other one. And that's it. And we send that. When we want to audit the database, we do a small computation. And we get back the evaluation and the certificate. And we check both things. Okay. And now you can see with respect to the previous slides like this that the servers now is not as fast as it used to be because we are doing this expensive encrypted polynomial evaluation. Okay, so it's slightly more expensive, but still it's comparable to one hash of the database. Okay. The client now is almost constant time. Okay, so it's faster even. And the sizes that were, uh, say, something like five megabytes for, for the proof size and the keys are now much lower, okay, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. Okay, so basically, um, there used to be something that were very fast, but with a lot of duplication on the database. After that, there was some linear algebra, which was much better on the, on the replication, but somewhat slower on the storage and computation time. We're able to, to uh, reduce all this. The price to pay is, okay, something not so fast on, on the server side, but it's uh, actually pretty fast. So for instance, for one terabyte database, the server uses less than five minutes on one core, uh, but this is much cheaper than storing a lot of things uh, that, that are useless for you, actually. Okay. Uh, so that's what we did. And one thing that we cannot completely do is, is um, so we can do the first protocol with public verification, but not the second one. So the polynomial evaluation, we cannot publicly verify it right now. And that's one open problem that we have. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks very much for this excellent talk. Uh, no questions so far on the Zulip, but I, I have one myself. So I wonder if it would be possible to uh, combine dynamic proofs of retrievability with the work presented earlier by Kasra Adalat Najad uh, regarding uh, private collection matching systems. Probably the computation cost would be so high that the servers would all melt, but like, in, like conceptually, do you think you could combine something like this with uh, a private um, collection matching system? Because it seems like the use cases are complementary unless I'm... Yeah, it's the converse use case, but, uh, but probably we can, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know, <laughs> is the first answer, but uh, because usually the techniques that hide something from the user and the techniques that hide the other thing are, are actually quite different. We could not find so many things that were uh, here, able to here, do both. Here it's like a proof that you're able to retrieve something, right, so. Like. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but here the, the the database is set up as a client first. So here the client doesn't have access to the database beforehand. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's it's worth looking that. at it. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot uh, for this great talk. Let's move on to 